Okay, good. Right, over to you guys. Go ahead. So let, let's give a, a big round of applause to, to the team. Virtually. Raimi, boleh mula? Okay, first. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Okay, um, uh, we are uh, from Group Five, and uh, we will present about the laser diet. So, uh, okay, so these are my teams. Uh, okay, uh, my, okay, next. Okay, for my part, I will uh, present about uh, the introduction of a laser diode. Okay, next. Okay. If we talk about a uh, laser diode, uh, we will uh, directly talking about uh, two components, which is first is uh, a laser, uh, which is means by uh, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So uh, the emitted uh, beam uh, uh, emit uh, by the laser process. And secondly, uh, is a diode, uh, which is a semiconductor device that is essentially acts as a one-way switch for current. So in a laser diode, they uh, have a diode, which is uh, 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 consists of a uh, uh, two region, which is a P. P type and N type uh, region. Okay, next. So, what is a laser diode? Okay, uh, laser diode is a uh, uh, uses of a uh, PN junction to emit a uh, coherent light uh, in which all waves are at the same frequency and phase. So, oh, okay. So uh, in a laser diode, uh, uh, it's a semiconductor laser device that is very similar to the both form and operation to the light of uh, emitting uh, diode or LED. So uh, the laser diode and LED uh, have a similarity uh, uh, operation, but uh, in a laser diode uh, emit uh, a coherent light, which is all the waves are the same frequency and phase. Uh, this coherent light is produced by a laser diode using a laser process. As I said, uh, uh, for a laser diode, uh, emit the beam or the light by the uh, laser process. And for LED, uh, just uh, uh, light, uh, pro, uh, emit uh, a light. Uh, so uh, this coherent light uh, produced by a laser, the, okay, unlike a regular diode, the goal of the laser diode is is to recombine all the carriers in the one region and produce light. These laser diodes are fabricated using a direct band gap semiconductors. So uh, in laser diode, the, the emitted beam are more focused and can uh, travel uh, in a long distance because uh, it's more focused to recombine all the carriers in one region uh, to produce light. So this is a figure of the diode. Uh, laser diode. Okay, next. So, um, in uh, laser diodes are uh, a special type of a uh, uh, diode that uh, have a extra uh, layer, which is uh, between the uh, N and P uh, region. Uh, there is, is one region is we call it in is a uh, intrinsic. So. Uh, a pin diode is a diode which is a white and dope uh, intrinsic cause semiconductor region. Okay, sandwiched between a P-type semiconductor and the N-type semiconductor. Both uh, P-type and N-type regions are typically heavily doped. As you uh, you can see the figure, we can see between the P and N-type region, there is uh, one extra layer uh, that uh, occurs, uh, occur the... Uh, the process of the uh, emitted beam. Okay, next.
Okay, the choice of the semiconductor material determines the the wavelength of the emitted beam. So in the laser diode, we can found uh, from the uh, uh, UV uh, range to the infrared. So there is a, 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 a difference uh, uh, product of the uh, emitted beam uh, uh, depends on a different uh, material that we that we we use. So there is uh, infrared uh, in uh, in uh, about aluminium aluminium uh, gallium arsenide. Uh, there is a uh, visible uh, in uh, when we use uh, alum aluminium gallium uh, indium uh, phosphate. Uh, P material system are commonly used, uh, but in some uh, uh, two and four compound semiconductors such as zinc, cadmium, selenium, or zinc selenium are also used in the laser diode to emit uh, visible light. So, for typical laser diodes emitting a visible light are composed of a three and five compound semiconductor uh, such as a uh, gallium arsenide or uh, Indian arsenide. Okay, next. So this is uh, the table uh, that shown uh, emission of wavelength for for the different uh, type of source or the material that we use uh, comes to uh, different of the uh, emission wavelength and uh, comes to the uh, different uh, application of the the laser diode. So you can see there is a uh, data storage, laser pointers, uh, CD players, and the others. So that's from uh, for me. Next, I will pass to my friends. Uh, thank you, Rahimi. My name is Nur Sakina. I'm going to present on the device configuration part of the laser diode. Next slide. So before we go further about the device configuration, I just want to give a general overview on where we can find the laser diode. So if you look at the left diagram, the laser diode can be found near laser near the laser diode mounts, driver and the temperature controller. And those are the necessary components used for the large operational device. Meanwhile, in the right picture shows the laser torch, a simple device where inside the circuit and laser chips is the CAN diode, C-A-N diode, CAN diode, having a laser diode inside. And later in the application part, you will see a lot more laser, di laser diode device and these are just some of the examples from the applications. And after we know where we can find the laser diode, now we focus on the structure itself. Next slide. So the structure of the laser diode is different depending on its types. And the first types of laser diode is the homojunction laser diode, which Rahimi has shown in his slide about the pin diode. The pin diode is basically consists of a sandwich of P-type and N-type of the same semiconductor material. And between the P-type and N-type is the intrinsic region. The pin diode has been used for quite a long time. And researchers can detect some problems rises from the pin diode. And to overcome the problems, the researchers have added additional layer towards the pin diode and they call double heterostructure or DH laser diode. So among all these type of laser diode, the most commercially used in industry is the DH laser diode and the quantum well laser diode. In the next slides, I will be focusing into the DH laser diode. So in this slide, at the upper part of the left diagram that shows the red color of the P-type and N-type gallium arsenide from typical homojunction device or also called pin diode. The pin diode is named homojunction because of the same material used that is in this case is gallium arsenide. So what are the problems from the homojunction device? Firstly, the efficiency of the homojunction device was very poor because of low carrier density in the active area. And second, because of a weak overlap between the inverted region and the optical mode. So to overcome this problem, an additional layer of N substrate in highly doped P-type semiconductor layer is added between the pin diode. So if you focus on the diagram in the middle, is the DH laser diode. So for manufacture of the DH laser diode, 
is normally stuck with the end substrate and the other layers can be grown on top. The end substrate is there as a light absorbing layer to absorb light on an wavelength emitted from the active layer. And the choice of the material used for the end substrate must have a very similar lattice constant as the, lattice, as the layers on top to avoid the structural mismatch. That is the development of string that will increase with the increasing lattice mismatch. Uh, for example, if you use the gallium arsenide as the end substrate, the above layer material that has the same lattice constant is the aluminium gallium arsenide. Similar with the other material, if you use gallium nitride for the end substrate, and the layer on top that have the same lattice constant is the indium gallium nitride. So on top of the end substrate is the sandwich of P and N type semiconductor, but the difference between this semiconductor and in the homojunction semiconductor is the P-type and N-type is fabricated with alloy so that we can tune the band gap and the spectral range of emission. Other than that, the refractive index of the P-type and N-type is slightly lower than above layer so that the light width is confined in that region. And the last highly doped P-type layer on top is there to improve the conversion efficiency and long-term reliability of high-power optoelectronic devices by confining the radiative recombination occur at the active layer. So this DH laser having a metal contact with aurum, platinum and thallium, or sometimes it can be palladium, nickel and aurum. And be in mind that all laser diodes use direct band gap, by direct band gap semiconductor and connected with port bias current. Next slide. Apart from the basic semiconductor requirements, there are a number of optical requirements that are needed to enable the laser diode to operate. And this is because a laser needs feedback for the emitted photons to allow the positive feedback process required for amplified stimulated emissions. Hence, the inverted medium must be embedded into a resonator. And one of the conceptually simplest version is called Fabi parrot resonator, which consists of two parallel plane mirrors. For semiconductor lasers such as fabric parrot resonators are very easy to fabricate. This is just by cleaving the semiconductor crystal perpendicular to the optical waveguide. The cleave edges provide a reflectivity is about 30% and due to the high refractive index of the semiconductor. This is sufficient to provide enough feedback for the laser operation. And to achieve this, two walls of the laser diode that form from the resonator must be almost perfectly smooth, forming a mirror surface from which the light can be reflected internally. And one of the walls is made of slightly less reflecting to enable the light to come out from the laser diode. However, despite its conceptual simplicity, the cliff edge carry parrot concept also introduces a number of problems. First, the light output occurs on two sides of the laser, whereas for most applications, all the output laser is, is desired to be concentrated from one first seat only. For practical applications, this problem can be solved by depositing coatings onto the cliff first seats of the structure. And for example, if the deposition of 10% reflectivity coating on one first seat and another 90% reflectivity coating on the other first seats concentrate the laser emission almost completely to the first seat of the lower reflectivity and anti-reflection coatings with reflectivities are used when laser diodes are coupled to external cavities. And the other problem is the emission wavelength is often not well defined due to the multi-mode emission. And this problem can be overcome by having a direct feedback laser diode. And to give a general overview, in the direct feedback laser diode for certain wavelengths, they will have a multiple reflections interfere constructively to provide enough distributed feedback for laser operation. With the DFB concept, we can have a single mode emission that can be realized even for high speed modulation of the lasers. And that's all for my part. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you, Nozakina. Uh, I am Muhammad Ibn Amin, and I will explain to you about the operating principle of the laser diode. Okay, firstly, um, 
I will explain about the PN junction. So PN junction, uh, we need to know that firstly, PN junction is using the forward bias operation. Hence, the, the n-type will, um, uh, electron in the n-type will um, recomb recombine with the hole um, from the p-type at the intrinsic uh, at the intrinsic layer. So, pin junction is used to make the laser diode. So, the intrinsic layer is sandwiched between the p and n junction. The presence of intrinsic layer is to increase the area of electron hole recombination. At the intrinsic layer of pin junction, uh, mirror-like material is put beside beside the uh, intrinsic layer to produce more electron hole pair so more sufficient light is produced so next um okay what is really happening in the laser diode so in the laser diode um when the switch is on so electron gains some uh, energy for it to excite excites uh, itself to another state and when when it happened it will um, making a electron hole recombination so the uh, the external energy is come from the battery itself or any any and another energy so it is um, give the electron uh, external energy so after electron gains it will eject this from the surface and recombine with the hole uh, at the intrinsic layer. So this is the diagram. So the basic um, basic of the laser diode. So this is basically uh, supposedly uh, it is a ninety percent reflective mirror and ninety five uh, no ninety percent and ten percent so that the electron will bounce in the intrinsic layer and uh, ejected 10% um, from uh, the back and another 90% to the front. So we need to note that the limited lens is used to narrowing the light ejected because uh, the because the light ejected from the laser is wide. So um, lens is used to narrowing the, the light. So we need to know that also that the light produced by the laser diode is also is coherent and monochromatic. So this is the um, first first step of laser diode. What happened in the P uh, in P and N junction? So the energy is supplied to the electron. Okay. The atom is assumed initially at the, the lower state of energy, so it requires some energy to overcome the difference between the energy level e, E1 and E2. So the energy needed um, must be the difference of E1 and E2. Then some external sufficient energy is when some external energy is, up, um, is supplied to the electron, so it can excite to another state. If the energy supply is not enough, so the electron uh, cannot excite. So the process of laser diode is not uh, is not is not happening. After uh, the absorption process, here comes the spontaneous emission. So the now the atom is present at the upper energy level due to the absorption. Uh, as the electron reach the, the upper state, the electron is not stable. So, to stabilize back the condition, it will fall back uh, ground to the initial ground state. While falling to the ground state, um, it emits a photon in terms of light. So, the energy emitted will be equivalent to the difference between the energy level E2 minus E1, as uh, I mentioned here. So next is the most important part in the laser diode um, as the name of the laser diode is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. 
So, stimulated emission. Uh, to get the monochromatic light, the number of photon produced by the system might be increased. Uh, must be increased by implanting the partially mirror beside beside the uh, intrinsic layer. So the photon from the photon emits by the spontaneous emission uh, before uh, it will strike the electron at the upper state um, and it will stimulate the electron uh, and force the electron holes recombination before time. Let's say um, the time for electron to fall back is um, one second but the, the photon strike the electron 0 0.5 second so it will uh, in results extra photon is released so if the electron will bring uh, the energy from the previous pho uh, previous photon and it will bring uh, the, the, the photon uh, together so it, the, it will be double but something is here uh, how the electron in the upper state just simply absorb the photon energy uh, because the uh, the photon is happen between the e2 and e1 so here comes uh, the population inversion what happened in population inversion is um, it uh, we as let's say we have a um, three level of energy state so it is a condition where more electrons uh, the population inversion is the condition where more electrons occupy an excited energy state than the ground state let's say the e1 we have 50 percent and e2 we have 50 percent the population uh, inversion we needed let's say um 60 percent of the electron we we need to be at the upper state and and rest will be at the lower state so um in this diagram the either electron the at the highest state let's say e3 will fall down to e2 and give extra photon energy to the other electron. Hence, the electron from E2 have double energy rather than emits only one energy. You can see here, here, it emits two energy. So, this process is called avalanche of proton. The proton is produced until the excited state are sufficiently populated with the electron. Or we can say that it is multiplied. One electron can produce um, uh, one photon can produce two, two photon and can produce four, and it will double, double until uh, it will have a sufficient energy to eject the photon. Uh, that's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Hello, everyone. So today uh, I'm going to present on pros and cons of. Uh, laser diode and also uh, applications of laser diode. You guys can hear me, right? All right. Uh, next slide. So the reason why I'm doing uh, the pros and cons of laser diode is due to the fact that uh, laser diode is a great product. It is a great technology. It is a great uh, semiconductor. Hence, uh, because of that, there is a large demand for them in the market, in the industry, and large, uh, uh, from what we call it, supply for them uh, to support the demand from the manufacturers and companies and so uh, Moving on, uh, so the advantages of uh, laser diode, have, they have a high power output, laser diode is lightweight, and they have, they have high efficiency. Uh, you guys notice, uh, Actually, disadvantages actually describe what uh, we Malaysians often describe a uh, Japanese mobile car. So, yes, because of that, uh, we can, uh, they have a high popularity also in the market and in, in over, uh, have high popularity over other type of laser diode. And then, disadvantages of laser diode. The zombie two, 
which is critical heating problem. Uh, the laser beam that is produced by laser diode, uh, they have large divergence angle. Next slide. Applications of laser diode. Uh, as I've said before, there is large demand for laser diode. Uh, in this slide, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to pick you guys up on what demand that the market has on laser diode. Alright, uh, laser diode is actually quite studied in the United States. So, uh, they are used for a variety of applications due to I mean, by taking advantage of the characteristics of a uh, laser beam that is produced by laser diode, which is uh, straightness, uh, small emission spot size, monochromaticity, high light density, and coherence. Then, uh, as you guys can see uh, on the slide, the plan of you guys, there are seven uh, functions that is provided uh, by the laser diode, which is very, they can function to read, they can function to record, they can function in sensitivity, communication, measurement, lighting, and sensing. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is explain each of these functions uh, through uh, their uh, examples. So, I'm going to start with read and record because they are, so they are like two different faces of the same coin. So, uh, for read, and the card we have example of CD, DVD, and Blu-ray discs. Uh, how they are actually able to read and record to be used in compact discs, DVD, and Blu-ray discs is due to the fact that for read, the function of read, they have the abilities to ability to high high speed reading of ultra fine signals with micron spot, and for record. The only difference with read is that uh, they have a higher output than the, uh, the reading part and then when they have a higher output, they can change the organic film on the CD in, uh, in not simpler words is they use high output to change the color of an organic film or phase of a crystal to write signal on the CD. And we move on to sensitivity. We have an example of laser printer. Uh, actually what laser do, laser diode do in laser printer is they draw signals by I mean, ah yes, draw signals by radiating a proper sensitive drum in the uh, laser printer. Moving on, uh, communication. When discussing, when talking about uh, communication, uh, what I'm trying to say is optical communication and PCs and mobile phones, etc. And if you guys remember, uh, optical fiber that you already have presented before, laser diode is what will always be used uh, in uh, optical fiber communication due to the fact that it is uh, it, it is a great I mean quite a great source of it is a great source of not source it is a great medium I mean sorry a great medium used to transmit data then we have lighting uh, an example of uh, other example instead of laser microscope, we have uh, pointing markers and light lasers. This is due to the function due to the ability of uh, laser direct to pinpoint pin sorry pin spot irradiation that enables accurate pointing. And then that measurement. Uh, as you can see, there is an example for roads, cars, and buildings. For roads, uh, uh, I'm going to explain the example first. The roads we can measure the road, measure the road distance, and for cars we can measure the road, uh, distance between cars, as in lidar, and then we can also use to uh, use laser to measure the height of a building. This is due to the fact that due to the fact again, yeah, sorry, 
due to the abilities of advocate of Lizzie they had less distance uh, compared to a primitive time of measuring. And then last one we have sensing. Uh, the example presented before you is smoke alarms. And then that we have uh, dust management. And then for and laser mice. It was, it is also used in laser mice. Laser mouse, I think. Because uh, laser diode easy to create switch patterns to detect slight changes. Uh, for information, uh, same as in group Jaira uh, before this. I don't remember what uh, they are presenting, but they design for smoke alarm. Uh, the, uh, the concept of using laser diode and uh, the smoke alarms that they use, they, that they explain, is the same, but uh, smoke alarms that use laser diode have a higher sensitivity compared to uh, their small alarm. All right, that's all from me. Thank you. I'm going to pass to my next presenter, Shafika. Thank you. Hey, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nasha Shafika Binti Azmi, and I'm going to present about companies that are related to the production of laser diode. Okay, our next. Okay, the first company is Osram. Osram is a photonic company that originated in Munich, Germany, dated around 110 years ago. The product portfolio consists of high-performance LEDs, infrared diodes, semiconductor lasers, and detectors. The locations of manufacturing centers in Malaysia are at the Bayan de Pass, and another one is at the high-tech film. Next. Okay, as a high-tech photonics company, Ostrom focuses more on the sensors, visualization, and light-based treatment. Okay, as you can see from the screen, Ostrom's area of expertise covers transport, safety and security, connection, and health and well-being. Okay, under the sensing category, one of Ostrom's uh, current project is LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging. Next. Okay, LIDAR is a method of measuring distance by shooting lasers and detecting how much time they take to return. Okay, by combining detectors, cameras, and optical depth sensing systems such as LIDAR, um, an auto vehicle can capture a detailed, real-time view of the space around it while building a redundancy to protect against the failure of any sensor. Okay, this idea is quite similar to radar, but instead of radio waves, we use lasers. Okay, the technology is extremely accurate at detecting objects even up to millimeters. Okay, so how does this LIDAR system work? Okay, at very short intervals, the laser diode sends light pulses into the vehicle's environment. And when the light hits an object, it is reflected and finally registered by a sensor. The system can then calculate the distance from the light to the object and back again in order to initiate appropriate actions such as braking. Okay, next. Okay, um, the next company is Rom Semiconductor and it was first established in Kyoto, Japan in 1958 as the manufacturer of small uh, electronic components. Okay, Rom offers a broad lineup of ICs, discrete semiconductors and optoelectronic devices like laser diodes, which are then optimized for a wide range of applications. Okay, next. Okay, there are three locations of the Rom Semiconductor Center in Malaysia. The, uh, the two cell centers are at the Bataling Jaya and Penang, whereas the manufacturing center is at Kelantan. Next. Okay, in general, there are a few kinds of laser diodes that are produced in the Rome company. Okay, the first one is high output laser diode. Okay, this kind of diodes deliver high peak output with false lighting, making them ideal for use as light sources, light sources for distance measurement. Uh, it is expected to be applied to the in-vehicle uh, in vehicle field such as LIDAR. Okay, the second one is VC cell, which also can be used in the LIDAR system. Uh, Rome also offers many ranges of infrared laser diodes from 780 nanometer to 940 nanometer. Okay, for example, 780, 780 nanometer band laser diodes are commonly used in CD players. 
laser printers and multi-function devices. Okay, the next one is red, uh, red laser diodes. Uh, they are optimized for sensor applications such as barcode readers, ranging equipment and marking devices. Okay, there is also a broad lineup of dual wavelength lasers for CD or DVD players is offered. Uh, it is ideal for use in gaming systems and consumer electronics. Okay, the multi-beam laser diodes offered by Rome are available to meet the demand for faster printing and higher resolution. I think that is all from me. Thank you. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's move on to Q&A. Any questions? To group number five. Anyone? Okay, I'm uh, yourself. Doctor. Yeah, yeah. Support. I want to ask to Hazi. Uh, my name is Juaria. Okay, Juaria. I want to ask to Hazi. What's the difference between photo diode and laser diode? Yeah, that used in the smoke detector. All right, Hazi. Go on. All uh, right. Wait, huh? Uh, I've opened, I've, I've done some research on that, uh, how it works. Uh, it's uh, of laser diode, uh, I mean, uh, laser diode detection, uh, are similar to the use of uh, photodiode. But in some sense, uh, uh, in, in photodiode, uh, the photo there emits light into a sensing chamber that is designed to keep out to keep out ambient light while allowing smoke to enter. Any particles of smoke or dust that enter in the chamber will scatter the light and trigger the photodiode sensor. Right? So the only difference is a laser, as the name implies, light amplification. Uh, then use an extremely bright control laser diode and the laser beam that is transmitted through the chamber to a light thread which eliminates any reflection and uh, needs for a uh, more precise and more sensitive uh, sensor to detect laser diode and uh, so the large I mean, large difference between photodiode and laser diode is due to the fact that uh, laser diode can be focused and photodiode is not so much. Uh, laser diode is coherent. So, uh, just imagine that laser, uh, the laser beam that is produced uh, by laser diode, when something actually uh, and and the sensor is also the size of the uh, laser beam emitted. So when there is something that disrupts the laser diode uh, emission, and uh, the sensor will quickly detect it. Uh, compared to the photodiode sensor, uh, the photodiode emission is uh, not mistaken. Uh, the uh, based on uh, they have a large uh, divergence and and they are so so uh, not too focused and uh, it's like there are too many of uh, wavelength that is produced and then uh, laser beam uh, I mean sorry sensor diode the sensor diode and the sensor uh, the sensor for the photo okay. the photograph okay. sensor will also have a, a large area to detect uh, the photodiode emission. So when there when there is a dust or something that disrupts the whole lot of wavelength that is produced by I mean the emission by photodiode photodiode photodiode. Mm. The, they will only disrupt one or not too many of them, but the other can still be detected by the laser, uh, by the photodiode sensor. 
So photodiode is more, oh sorry, laser diode is more sensitive. Yes. Yes, it's okay. the conclusion that I, that I found. All right, any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Okay, uh, Saboni, Amiru, Amiru. All right, we'll all do it. Uh, how does the the lidar sensor used in, in self driving car? Exactly my question. I was I was about to ask. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You asked already. I was about to ask about Tesla. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the crash. Excuse me, ask your question. Lidar in autonomous vehicle, right? Uh, I'm wrong. Self driving, yes. self driving cars. Tesla. Okay. Uh, and, uh, 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 okay. Eh. Uh, to answer your question, Tesla didn't use lidar, okay? <laughs> uh, Tesla didn't. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. uh, Tesla used vision. There's only cameras, if I'm not wrong, lah. Uh, because it oh, not okay. take the idea of uh, lidar. Is it lidar mm. or lidar? Lidar, lidar. No need to say lidar. lidar. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it say uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, mm. Elon Musk only use cameras around the Tesla. Uh, because I think mm. the, uh, he uh, he hates the idea of the uh, lidar is because it is quite expensive, and then mm. he also state that the lidar is kind of ugly. If you uh, I don't know if you if you guys have seen the lidar uh sensor before but the lidar sensor is on top of the roof uh, oh yeah. does it have to be big oh uh, yes or it just is a big. small no no, no it oh, is yeah? big yeah mm. i forgot but then picture. but then uh without the lidar it compromises the accuracy is it oh uh, yeah or... uh that's maybe that's why tesla only use camera because it uh the camera use uh it it shows the real picture of the surrounding, but for LiDAR, it's like a 2D. Mm. Mm, okay. It's like uh, a letdown. La. Mm. But if you know what was the what's the root cause of the crash, if you know anything about the Tesla's latest, you know, latest news about the crash thing, I think uh, no. <laughs> I haven't done okay. research about that. Mm. Because that is a very huge risk of uh, autonomous vehicle. Yeah. That people are talking about now. Uh, Alright, any other questions? I want to ask one more. Okay, Juaria, huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Juaria, go ahead. I want to ask, uh, can silicon be used in laser diode? Sorry, sorry? Can silicon be used in laser diode? Ah, can silicon be used uh, in laser diode as a laser diode? Anyone? Um, I don't think silicon is uh, can be used in the laser diode because it has a uh, indirect semiconductor, and mm. than that is until now they don't have any latest constant that is still compatible with the silicon. Or oh, other, you mean other semiconductor material? Ah, yeah. Okay. How, how about any, any double heterostructure involving silicon? If you have read any? DH, you know, I mentioned about DH structure just now in your presentation. Mm -hmm. do, do we have any double heterostructure involving silicon at all or just uh, compound three five or two six. Mm. If not, I'm not mistaken. I'm afraid about silicon carbide, but I'm not sure about about the silicon. use of silicon carbide. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, we can check it out later on. So, what is the role of the intrinsic layer, uh, for this particular device? So we we talk about photo detector intrinsic layer to, to uh, enhance the, the response, to get faster response. So for this particular case, what is the exact role of the intrinsic layer? It, it is to increase uh, increase the area of um, electron and hole recombination. So uh, more, more electron and hole uh, recombination is produced, so more photon mm -hmm. is produced. 
Okay, so 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 you want wider area for recombination to take place so that uh, we have more radiative, uh, we have more radiation outside of the device, right? Yeah. So the the intrinsic layer is of different. Uh, sorry, is of the same material as well. Say you use gallium arsenide base, so the intrinsic is also gallium arsenide. Ah, yes. Or some or same. It is uh dope. Single character. So, ah, so that means you say if you use um gallium arsenide uh laser diode, so the intrinsic is also gallium arsenide. Yeah, it can be gallium arsenide or it can be any uh any material that can uh uh can uh sandwich can Between. make the operation can make make the operation uh occur. So it can be both. Uh, semi. Uh, okay. My other. So okay. Shafika added something here. Okay. You can go on and see the link uh, later on. The self driving car sensor. Right. Uh, someone mentioned about multi mode uh, emission. Or was it Yuzan? Yes, yes. Well, what is exactly multi mode emission? What is the multi mode? Oh, uh, the three level, three level, energy level, uh, three energy level. Oh, the E1, E2, E3. Yes, yes. So if you have different energy levels, then, then does the wavelength produced by the uh, emission will be uh, coherent? Yeah, uh, like, um, let's say um, the elect we just, one electron is ejected mm -hmm. um, from the ground and it will uh, achieve the upper state so when mm. it fall back down it mm. will uh, let's say e1 to e3 so it so, uh, fall back down to e2 and release um, another energy another energy so the another energy um, strike the electron at e2 okay so it gives extra energy for e2 and then e2 mm -hmm. fall back down to e1 and mm. brings the energy from E3 and E2. So, so you're talking double. about two different energy levels emitted. Two colors emitted, right? Two no, different no. energy levels mean no, it, or, or it just single double, energy. Just single single energy. Same uh same for same photon, but it just uh double like the amplitude. Um double the So amplitude. as a result you have more emission. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, right. This is also interesting. Um, someone mentioned about the mirror-like material at the side of intrinsic layer, left and right. So, yes, what are those both. materials? Are they the same materials, or you are depositing another oh. different material as a mirror or on both sides? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. You want it to uh, reflect. You you want it. You want it to contain, right? To contain within the uh, the intrinsic layer, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, kita nak trap, kita nak trap lah, basically. Mm -hmm. Right? So that you can maximize the, the mechanism in there. Yes. Uh, anyone? Sakina? Yeah, Sakina. I, I see Sakina. Uh, also, Sakina, uh, can, you, can you add on that? Any materials we use? Any specific materials we have to use as uh, the mirror? Um, from my reading until now, I didn't find any specific material for the mirror. But mm -hmm. they only say that it cleaves, it cleaves the mirror. Uh, cleave oh. on the semiconductor. On the side. Yeah. Because now when I when I saw your diagram, I can see the side and also the can you go back to the page now? Where, oh. where you put on the mirrors on both sides of the intrinsic layer, up and down. Much like you trap there again. Oh yeah. Uh, can you go back to that page? I saw this one. Like uh, or this. Know, the thing was that? I, I couldn't remember. I, I saw the channel. Ah, the, uh, that one, yeah? No, no, the vertical one. This one. Ah, this one, yeah. This one. So the the white lines there uh, yeah. upside and downside of the intrinsic layer uh, is the mirror. Yes. So, huh, so is there any specific 
uh, it actually it is actually um, uh, not the outside up, uh, up and down it is actually just uh, beside because the p and n type uh, sandwich mm -hmm. the intrinsic so if mm -hmm. the if the mirror is put so the electron mm -hmm. cannot be electron and hole cannot move into the intrinsic so basically we yeah. just put it uh, beside the um, material so that the the electron holes combination uh, just happen in the mm -hmm. intrinsic oh, okay, just, okay just on the side then yes yes uh, okay, okay. Just, okay. Uh, the reflective mirror is uh, the back is 90 percent and the front is uh, mm. actually 10 percent because uh, there is um, some lights need that there is there is a need to to the light to um go to out um from the system to mm -hmm. prevent um heat prevent heat in the system mm, so it goes out through one one uh, one side and then get reflected a lot on uh, the other side yeah one side is just a small portion of light and the other side the front one that we want to we want the laser to eject it is mm. uh, like 10 percent. so the back one 90 percent just uh, go out and to reduce the heat in the system okay uh, my last question so someone mentioned about anti-reflection is now on the outgoing channel something to in order to uh reduce reflection back i, I think, think i think one uh, uh, is it was it sakina oh uh, yeah my part i think mm -hmm. atas. which one which one um mm. yang mana yang ada color pink ni eh. asyik kan tu is it yeah i don't know uh, yang bawah lagi Oh, okay. This one. Okay. Uh, prepare it. Uh, I don't know what is it there. I, I couldn't remember, but uh, so you, you mentioned something like anti-reflection in order to uh, reduce reflection on the outgoing channel so that you can emit the laser as intended. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, I yeah. I'll say that the anti-reflection coatings with mm -hmm. With reflectivities usually below 10 to power of negative 4 are used when the laser diode are coupled to external cavities. Yeah. So without the anti-reflective coating, uh, it won't operate, is it? I or... think it still operated. Mm -hmm. I think as still it can be operated, but mm -hmm. usually it more convenient for the external cavities. Okay, to improve the performance then. Oh, yeah. Okay, last question here from Mac. What is the lifetime range of laser diode and what happens to the device if the temperature rises with time? Okay, last two questions together in one sentence. Lifetime and what happens if the temperature increases? Uh, I, I'm not sure about the lifetime, but um, it is... It is uh, the rise will, will uh, increase, but um, the research have uh, made the the laser to be more uh, more convenient to use. So the system they have um, like like I say that like I said that the when the back one have a ninety percent um, mirror, so small amount of light will be ejected from the back and they have a photo detector like they detect the the temperature rise so mm -hmm. uh, it will reduce the it will reduce the energy supply from the uh, it will reduce the energy supply so that the only the electron bound in the uh, intrinsic layer uh, will um, will eject it and then when it detects um less uh electron hole recombination it will supply supply uh, a little bit at the end it just um repeating uh repeating repeating uh okay all right so have you heard yeah, about the idea. cooling cooling water as well cooling water in the system in a laser system 
we also need to use some cooling water usually. Ah uh, yes. To, yeah, right? Cooling water yeah. to ensure the temperature is stable all the time. All right, so yeah, thank you very much to group number five. Uh, doctor, I just found oh, okay. the last time of laser is 25,000 to 50,000 hours. 25,000 to 50,000 hours. So any, any specific material there? Because it depends on the type of laser as well. Oh, uh, I don't know. Continuous car, just, pulse car, I then it depends on the yeah. semiconductor material as well. So, well, typically that's probably the range. So, all right, let's give a big applause to uh, group number five. So, thank you very much, uh, guys. So, we're done with five groups already. So, <laughs> one, one group per session. So, today is uh, Wednesday. So, tomorrow we're going to move on to group number six. We're going to have uh, SSD, solid state drive. Okay. So, um, yeah, well done. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow then with group number six. Bye bye. Take care. Assalamualaikum.